Greetings wherever you are and whoever you are with. I'm John Cook and I have the privilege of handling this very last online church service we will be having. Pastor Mike will be back here next week live and in person. Uh, You can come join us. We hope to see you or you can of course watch live on Facebook. We're finishing up a series today entitled Pray for America. And today I want to talk about peace, how we need to pray for peace. But more specifically, I'm going to talk about praying for joy, happiness. Happiness is what we would call it, uh, because we need peace in our country. And I'm not talking about the cliched uh, peace that we oftentimes hear of. I'm not talking about world peace, that type of peace, because honestly, we're never going to have that. As long as humans are in control of things, there is never going to be true peace. And we know that. There'll be times of perhaps relatively more peace, relatively less peace, but there's never going to be true peace. What I want to talk about today specifically is our own personal peace. Because while there may not be world peace, there may not be total peace in our country, we can at least have personal peace. And that personal peace can then influence our families, it can influence our communities, and ultimately it can influence our our entire country. Now, when I said I was going to talk about happiness uh, when I refer to peace, uh, peace is what we're looking for, but I think in a, in a better way, in a better vernacular that we use, we may say happiness, okay? When we are talking to someone, we don't say, you know, how's your peace? Is your peace well? Or are you a peaceful person? No, we generally say, are you a happy person? When I talk to my kids, I ask them, you know, are you happy? What What's going on in, in your life? Are you happy? Uh, when we look at the news, we're not seeing happy people right now, are we? Happy people don't have a tendency to riot and loot and burn. No, that is not happy people. Happy people have the ability uh, to be able to sit down uh, with someone who disagrees with them, and they're able to talk, and they're able to come to consensus, and they're able to come to uh, solutions. And that's what I want to discuss today. Now, a couple of years ago, I came across a study uh, by a pastor in Atlanta named Andy Andy Stanley. He's one of my favorite teachers. He did this study, uh, this entire video series called uh, What Makes You Happy? Now, I encourage you uh, to go find that series. You can find it on YouTube and perhaps watch that series as a personal study or watch it with your family because it has some very good points in it. They've affected me personally, helped me to understand happiness better. Uh, myself, and I, I you know, share that with my children. Um, and I've actually borrowed a bit of his outline for this message today because it's so important to us today. Uh, because we honestly are at a close to an all-time low on our happiness scale in America. Would you not agree? I mean, how's your pandemic been? How has your happiness level been throughout this pandemic? Um, some of you uh, may have may be in that place in life where you're just a happy person, and it's not really affected you. I'm afraid most of us, though, have suffered uh, at least some during the last five months or so. Uh, in this series, What Makes You Happy, Andy Stanley says this, If you keep trying to be happy and you're still not happy, you may not know what it takes for you to be happy. Now, that may sound uh, simple or it may sound confusing for some of us, but basically we either don't know what truly makes us happy or perhaps we've forgotten. Now, there's a lot of quick fix happiness out there. Uh, You turn on the TV, anytime you get to a commercial break, they're trying to sell you a quick fix happy, right? A, A dopamine happy, something to give you a quick fix, a caffeine happy. Uh, But it's very difficult for us in life to find true happiness. So we have to start with this question, this very simple, basic question of what makes us happy. You want to know the answer? Here's the answer. No thing can make us happy. No thing can make us happy. Can we all just simply agree that we can start at this? We understand this. No thing makes us happy. No thing is going to bring you true peace. No thing is going to bring you true happiness. Okay, here's a point that that we need to to begin with. It's something that we've learned as kids, uh, but it's something that perhaps we've forgotten or something we need to refocus on. Happiness is more about who than what. Now, there's a lot of evidence out there to back this up. It's something that we've learned from uh, our 
our childhood. Uh, remember being in the backyard playing, and it really didn't matter what you were playing as long as you were playing with the right who's. Who was there? That's what really mattered. You could play with anything. You could have anything as long as you had the right who's. Okay, and then you went into elementary school and middle school and high school, and it really didn't matter what you had so long as you had the right group of who's in your life, right? True happiness is always associated with a who, not a what. Uh, think about it. Here's this next piece of evidence. Think about it. If it were a what that made us happy, if it were a thing that made us happy, then we always had that to go to to make us happy. And it didn't matter what was going on in our life or how we were being treated. I could just go home and get my happy thing and I would be happy. Uh, but we know where uh, that, that runs into a roadblock, don't we? Because a happy what always leads to a happy what else. It just never satisfies. It's that caffeine happiness. It wears off. It's, it's like the first phone you ever got that made you happy. I remember getting my first little Nokia brick phone, and I was so happy. It made me happy. And I remember sitting in my car looking at it, wishing I had some excuse to call someone or someone would call me. Okay, and then that wore off, right? And I got my next phone, which was a Razor flip phone, which made me really happy. And that wore off, and I got a BlackBerry, which I thought I was the thing then, and it made me happy. And then that wore off, and so on, and so on, and so on. And it's the same. It may be your car for some of you. Uh, for some of you, it may be a job. It may be a hobby. It may be a person uh, where you get in this relationship with someone. It really makes you happy, but then that wears off. So you find yourself looking for another relationship. Um, if an aging thing deflates our happiness, then we weren't really happy to begin with. If your phone, as it ages, begins to deflate your happiness, if your job, as it gets mundane, begins to deflate your happiness, if your if you're whatever thing that is begins to deflate your happiness, you weren't really happy to begin with. Uh, the final piece of evidence that helps us to understand that happiness is associated with a who and not a what is this. In the end, you will have relational, not possessional regrets. In the end, at the end of your life, you're going to want to make peace with a who, not a what. In the end, you're going to look back on your life and wish you had spent more time with the who's in your life because happiness is relational in nature. Now, one thing perhaps you could argue, um, if we would argue a thing, but it's not really a thing that makes us happy, is, is peace. Peace makes us happy. But more specifically, we'll say it this way. Happy people are at peace. Okay, Happy people, number one, are at peace with themselves. They, they're just comfortable in their own skin. You know these people that uh, no matter what they're wearing, no matter what they're doing, no matter where they're at, they're just happy. They're just okay with themselves. They're just, they're just content. They're happy people. We also know that happy people are at peace with others. For all of the good relationships in life they've had, all the bad relationships in life they've had, they've been able to get past all of that, make peace with everyone in their life, or even forgiven everyone in their life, and they're able to move on and just be at peace with others. And the final point that we see when we look at happy people is that happy people are at peace with God. Now, not meaning that they've got God all figured out or their relationship with God all figured out or all aspects of their faith figured out about God. It's just that they've committed to knowing that they have a Creator and that this Creator loves them, has a plan for them, and they've made peace with simply orienting their lives in such a way that honors their Creator. Now, here's a thing to focus on. Here's a point for us to focus on as we move on from here. Anything that undermines your peace with either yourself, your others, or God, anything that undermines your peace with them undermines your own happiness. I mean, all of us can think about an instant in our past that it may have been uh, during a relationship you had or perhaps a phase you were going through, a weekend that, that you went on a trip. It may have been a semester in college. It may have been 
all of your college, where you did something or you acted in a certain way that, that went, against, um, went against your conscience, uh, went against uh, some, someone you were in a relationship with, went, went against something that you believed to be true about yourself, uh, went against yourself, and, and you look up back on that with regret. And oftentimes we find that the biggest regrets in our life comes when we break that peace with, with more than one of those relationships, when we break that peace perhaps with all three of those relationships. And this broken peace um, eats away at us. It eats away at our happiness. And some of us carry, us, carry that with us uh, for the rest of our lives. So anytime... We have to remember that anytime we're unsure about this thing we're about to do, and you've got that gut feeling just telling you not to do it, we have to recognize that we're on the verge of undermining our own peace and ultimately undermining our own happiness. Happy people are at peace with God, themselves, and others. Now, as Christ followers, here's something that we know. Peace with God helps us find peace with others, and helps us to make peace with ourselves. And this is what Jesus was all about in His ministry, a peace and joy through Him. In Matthew, uh, we find a very important uh, insight for Christ followers. Okay, Jesus is out teaching one day, and a man, a teacher of the law, comes up to Jesus and he asks him an important question. Uh, perhaps he was trying to trap Jesus in this question, or perhaps he was just simply trying to gain genuine insight. But he asks Jesus what, what the most important law is, and here how it go, here's how it goes from Matthew uh, chapter 22 and verse 36. The, the man comes to Jesus and he says, Teacher, which is the greatest law in our commandment? Now, traditionally, Jews had an answer to this question, but he was wanting to understand uh, Jesus' take on this. Now, in our culture, we don't, we don't genuinely equate commandments to happiness, do we? No, we don't. We, we equate commandments, laws, to something that, that it is kind of a joy killer, a buzz killer for us, Right? But what Jesus wants us to see and what I want us to focus on today and to look at today is how this commandment that Jesus gives us leads us ultimately to happiness. All right, let's look at Jesus' response to this question in light of what we've talked about, about happy people are at peace with God themselves and others. Here's Jesus' reply to the man. Love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, to love God, to have peace with God. This is the most important thing. But Jesus doesn't stop there. No, He goes on. He goes on to say, and the second commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. To make peace with your neighbor, to make peace with yourself. So you see you have God, others, and yourself. And I can't overstate the importance of this because what Jesus is saying is that the most important thing to me, that Jesus is saying the most important thing to me, and since I speak for God, the most important thing for God is to, is to love God or to make peace with God, is, is to have peace with others, to have peace with ourselves. Uh, so we ask, so we say, Jesus, uh, what is the most important thing? He says, love God. That is make peace with God. Jesus, what is the most important thing? Uh, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Make peace with your neighbor. Make peace with yourself. Well, Jesus, it sounds a lot like saying, like you're saying, uh, uh, we, if we're at peace with ourselves and others and God, it, it sounds like, a lot like you're saying, uh, you want us to be happy. Like I do. Uh, when I was young, you may be like me. I grew up um, in a church, and I, I always thought that somehow God uh, was, was in the way of my happiness. All right, you may have grown up in the similar situation. Uh, many of us did. Um, I used to hear this growing up a lot, and perhaps you've heard it too. Uh, the, the adage, God doesn't want you to be happy. God wants you to be holy. Right? You may have heard that. So I always pictured uh, the goal of Christianity to be this group of just downcast, downtrodden, just miserable people. But as I've gotten older and I've grown in my faith and I've, I've seen more and more people in their relationship with God, what I've learned is that God is not in the way of happiness. God actually provides the way to happiness. 
Look, if I were to have a conversation with any of you about your life and your past, and you explain to me your, your greatest regret, the thing you carry around with you that just, that just hurt your spirit after you did it, your greatest regret, I would bet that a part of your greatest regret, probably the main theme of your greatest regret, involved you breaking your peace with either yourself, you know, I did something I never thought I would do, of breaking your peace with someone else, you know, I can't believe I used that person that way or I did that thing to that person, or breaking your peace with God. You know, I did this thing that my conscience was just screaming at me to not do. And by messing with your peace, it made you unhappy. Jesus invites you to make peace with yourself, to make peace with others, to make peace with God. Yes, God wants us to be happy and to find that happiness in Him. Because at the end of the day, God wants people to see Him in us. He wants, he wants them to see the joy and peace and contentment and hope that are found in Him. Okay, so let's summarize all of this real quick. If we know that no thing can make us happy. And we know that happiness is about a who, not a what. Okay, and we know that peace with God leads to peace with ourselves and enables us to make peace with others. And we know that people who have peace with themselves, others, and gods are happy people, then how do we get there? If we know all of that to be true, then what is the practical application? How do we do it? Well, the answer is actually very, very simple. The application, on the other hand, is a little bit more difficult. So if you want to know how to make peace with yourself, make peace with God, make peace with others, how to do that so that you can find this true, deep happiness, here's how you do it. Stop or start. Stop doing the things you know you shouldn't do. Start doing the things you know you should do. Look, I don't want to oversimplify this, but if you're in that place in life where you're just simply struggling with happiness, maybe you need to back up and restart with the basics. When we talk about these things we should stop or these things that we start, ultimately we're talking about something that is, that is not very popular in our culture to talk about. We're talking about a word called sin. In James uh, chapter 4, verse 17, James says this, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Now let's start at that very simple definition of sin and apply this to our lives in a very simple, very basic manner. If anyone then knows... Knows. Focus on that word, knows. For many of us, we've given up trying to live a certain lifestyle because we're simply confused about what we should do. We've had so many people for so long telling us all the things they think we ought to do or the things we ought not to do. We've simply gotten confused because oftentimes they contradict each other. But honestly, tell me, don't you have that one thing in your life right now that you know you should stop doing, or you know you should start doing, that's breaking your peace. That's breaking your peace with yourself. It may be breaking peace with someone else. It may be breaking peace with God. Perhaps that's one thing, that one thing that you know is, is hurting you personally that you should stop doing. Maybe that one person in your life that, that you're just harboring bitterness against that, that you need to let go. Or, or that one thing that your conscience keeps urging you to do or to not do that you need to listen to. When, when we don't do these things, we simply begin breaking that relationship. We begin breaking, hurting that peace that we have, and it hinders us in our, in our happiness, in our peace. Let's just keep it simple. But you may be sitting there and you may say, uh, look, John, you, you don't understand. I, I really enjoy this thing I shouldn't be doing. I mean, I really, really, really enjoy this thing. Besides, I've been doing it too long. I'm in too deep. Listen to me. No one ever said sin was not enjoyable. No one ever said that. The problem is, it's the caffeine happiness that you're experiencing. It will not 
lead to a deep, contented joy, the happiness that God wants for us. And what do we need more in our country right now? We need more people who exhibit this joy, who exhibit this life where people say, that's just, they're just happy. No matter what's going on. Look, there's always going to be a global pandemic or a financial crisis or a war or some other horrible thing going on in our lives. What an example we could set if we were at peace with ourselves, if we were at peace with others, if we were at peace with God, if we were genuinely happy. And we were able to share that with our family and able to share that with our community, able to share that with our country and our world. Why not today? Why not simply stop or start today? Let's pray for that, for our country, that we find peace, that we find happiness. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the life that you offer us, and we just simply ask that you help us. Help us be able to accept the life you want us to live. God, give us clarity when, when we need to see these things in our life that, that we need to stop or we need to start. Help us to see it clearly. God, give us the, the commitment to be able to follow through on these things. God, we need peace in ourselves. God, because we know if we have peace in ourselves, it'll spread. So help us with that today. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for watching. Hope your week goes well. We look forward to either seeing you here in person on next Sunday or follow us live on Facebook.